All right, here's my thing. MCA did an interview with Art at the Art of Dialogue, and in this clip, he actually says that Tupac's downfall... All right, Tupac getting involved with L.A. gang culture was the beginning of his downfall, not gang culture in general. So basically what MCA is saying is if, if, if Tupac decided to be... A, if he joined the Chicago gang, he would have been alive. Basically, he's trying to say that L.A. gang politics are so hardcore and so extreme that Tupac just couldn't handle it. He, he, he couldn't handle it. Even though, all right, MC8 was gang-affiliated, he got involved in gang culture in L.A., so how come that wasn't the beginning of his downfall? Is MC8 trying to say that he knew how to gangbang better than Tupac? Because basically, gangbanging was the, was the start of your downfall to MC8. MC8 right now is considered an elder statesman in hip-hop. He hosts a podcast. But when he was in his 20s, his gang affiliation affected him. He had beef. He lost friends to the streets, and then when he became a famous rapper, he got involved in a beef with DJ Quick over, over, over color banging, Crip versus Blood, people got hurt, innocent people, and people had this negative perception of MC8 that, hey, this guy is a gang member, you can't do business with him because he's a gangster. But MC8, in reality, was an actor. He, in reality, he was an artist, and he wanted to express his art, artistry. But the fact that he was affiliated with a gang and gang banging, that was a down. That was somewhat of a downfall for him too. See, my thing is this: these guys want to get on here and say, "Well, Tupac's problem wasn't that he was in a gang; it was that he was in a L.A. gang." And it's always an L.A. native saying that, as if they're elite and 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 they're so experienced and so skilled in gang banging that they can handle L.A. gang banging. But Tupac can't. Tupac, no, he can't handle it, but I can handle it. You know, even though I gangbang too, it wasn't my downfall, it was his downfall. No, gangbanging is all black men's downfall. Don't try to put this perception out there that you got to be a special kind of warrior to handle L.A. gangbanging, and MC8 was that special kind of warrior, but Tupac wasn't. No, gangbanging affected your life adversely as well. You lost friends, you lost business opportunities, it took you 30 years to convince the industry that you're just an actor and, a, and, a, and, a, and an artist and not some crazed gangbanger, right? Because MC8 went through that in his career as well. MC8 filmed movies and had the movies confiscated because the person that was directing it and, and invested in it was gang-related. So how come that wasn't your downfall? How come when Nate Hill from Chicago paid you all that money to act in that movie and the feds confiscated the movie how come that that wasn't a downfall for you being gang affiliated to the point where now you're connecting with other gangs and so you're doing the same thing that tupac was doing so how come you can do it better but tu you were good at it but tupac was bad at it is, is that what you're saying my thing is this we can't we can't lose sight of the fact that tupac was 25 years old he wasn't even old enough to fill out his own college application he needed his mama's tax information you, can, you can't file your own FAFSA until you're 26. He died at 25. So it's easy to go back in the past and say, well, Tupac, his downfall was that he got involved in L.A. gangbanging. MC8, that was your downfall too. Being a gang member didn't do anything for you. It gave you a hard life, you know? So don't sit here and say that Tupac was killed because he couldn't handle the L.A. funk. But you could. That's basically what you're trying to say. And at the end of the day, gangbanging affects all. It affects it affected you. Name how many dead homeboys you got, MC8. Name how many opportunities you've lost because people look at you as this gangster. Talk about the fact that now that you're in your 50s, you can finally relax. And people in the business world finally want to do business with you because they don't look at you as that 20-year-old gangbanger no more. So yeah, you can argue that you gangbanging, your gangbanging was your downfall, right? So I, I, I don't understand it. People always want to say, well, Tupac shouldn't have got involved in L.A. politics. That was his downfall because he couldn't handle it. That's basically what they're saying. No, Tupac, just like a lot of other black males in their 20s, got adversely affected by gangbanging. Tupac isn't the only one. A lot of people got affected by gangbanging. You know I mean? If, if you want to be technical, 50 Cent, he got shot nine times as a result of gangbanging. Basically, different cliques and queens having beef, that's basically gangbanging. Bobby Shmurda, negatively affected by gangbanging. Um, 
Come on, man. I mean, I just don't understand why people always want to isolate Tupac and say, well, Tupac's problem was that, you know, and, and if Tupac were here, he probably wouldn't even be your friend. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that, but it just seems like everybody knows everything about Tupac. The man was a boy. He was 25 years old, yet here we have we have these 50-year-old men who weren't even that close to Tupac when he was alive acting like they're experts on him. And at the end of the day, all you're doing is really giving him a backhanded compliment, a back, you're criticizing him in a slick way by saying that, oh, he couldn't handle the L.A. gangbanging, but you did? So you successfully passed through the gauntlet, but Tupac couldn't do it because he was less than you? Come on, man.